Good morning all. Last time I connected this uh, Opus lithium battery charger, I think it also does nickel metal hydrides, I can't remember, I connected it via the 12 volt input, it made a loud pop and I can't remember where the smoke came out, but anyway, it now has a rattly thing in it, so this needs fixing, let's take a look inside. And I haven't dared you use it uh, since it went bang. Not because I'm worried about that particularly, but I suspect that that might be metallic and uh, might be sitting across uh, something that metallic things shouldn't sit across. Okay. Oh, usual thing, they haven't quite undone. Oh, that's interesting. There's a load of furry stuff in there. Let's have a closer look. Wait for it to focus. And uh, yeah, there's quite a bit of fluff in here. Oh, it's still attached to something. Well, it's obvious what it is. It's that. It's a capacitor. It went pop. It's a 10 volt capacitor, which is interesting because that's a 12 volt input we need to see where that's connected. I mean, 10 volts, <laughs> it has to be after the regulator, doesn't it? It can't be before. If it is before, then we have a very obvious uh, reason for it blowing. But let's take a look. Now, how does this thing come out? Oh, that pin has come out with that spring. Let's take that out. And does this now lift out? Yes, it does. Oh, there's the LCD with a zebra strip. Oh, and a little backing sheet. Let's not disturb that. Uh, yeah, so the zebra strip sits on there. So uh, let's just take a look at where this capacitor is. So it's here, right next to the power socket. It's this position here can't really see much there one of the power socket connections goes directly to that that's probably negative although we don't know now because the can's blown off and that's not connected to anything on this bottom side so we need to take a look at that on the top side the only trouble is there's a lot of mess there so i think that capacitor is going to have to be lifted out there's a blob chip here with an enormous number of test points why so many and wires running under here and most of them seem to go to the uh, zebra strip connections so i guess they test this without the lcd in place but yeah that's a lot of test points isn't it so here's what's in the capacitor there's a rubber bung at the bottom that's bendy rubber and then there's the spiral of uh, metallic elements and I don't know what this fluff is, whether that's something which holds the electrolyte. That's interesting. I don't like the look of this solder splash on there. Oh, it's pretty loose. So that's fine. And I've put a solder splash of my own on there, which I will remove. Uh, I've still got to get these um, two pins out of the board where the capacitor electrodes are. But I'm still trying to trace that's an HT7530, so that's a 3.3 volt regulator would be my guess. Um, I seem to remember that ground is on the left on these, but I can't remember where in and out are. I'll have to look up the uh, data sheet. Well, looky here, there's the positive pin on the connector, and it runs down to that top PCB point. There are three PCB points. Um, for positive, negative, and the switch contact, I guess it is. Although I don't know whether the switch contact is used. Or well, maybe it is to, to disconnect the option for 5 volt input if you're using the 12 volt input. Um, but anyway, positive goes down on that top point. There's the top point, Run, ra runs around here directly to the positive of this 10 volt capacitor. What were they thinking? I tried the solder wick, it doesn't work, or I can't get on with it. Sucker time. 
Ooh, that didn't quite suck it all out. Now, what have I got in electrolytics? Well, I found these 470 at 16 volts, and they look like they've got a small enough diameter to fit in there, so I think I'll use those. And there is a positive mark there, so that's nice and easy to get my orientation right. It's going to be that way round with the lettering to the top, which is nice. Yeah, I struggle getting the other one out, and it's because there are no spokes out to the rather large ground plane. So you do need a hot iron to suck the solder out. And similarly, a hot iron, I'm running at 400, to solder the new capacitor in. Just snip that off, and we'll take a look at the capacitor in its position. And it's there, 470 at 16, and hopefully it's sitting on top of a component there, but hopefully that'll fit inside the case. Let's reassemble it. So that's the spring and the little post back in, and that makes the negative connection focus, able to slide all the way up. So that looks fine. Um, a little bit of pressure needs to be put on that to make the zebra strip um, pressurize or connect properly but that presumably is afforded by these two screws and there's my 12 volt input let's get the screws in and power it up right unrehearsed plugging in of the 12 volts it's actually 12.8 because it's sunny today and that all powers on and looks pretty good yeah, how dumb was that, putting a 10 volt cap across a 12 volt input? Hmm. Let's put this big cell in. This is a 21700 IMR, 3.7 volts, 4800 milliamp hours. That means the slide's going to have to go all the way to the end to fit that thing in. And what have we got? Uh, one amp. I'll leave it at one amp. I don't know what to do at the moment. I think you just wait and then it will start charging. There it goes, charge, and we can look at mode, milliamp hours, hours, milliohms, 107, and 3.69012 volts. This is quite fun. Look, you can use this as a, a single 18650, or I suppose I could use that 21700 uh, power bank because you can switch on the USB output which is now pulling from this cell, driving all these lights on this seven-way USB thingy. Half an amp, 5.1 volts, batteries down to 3.95 volts. And so what have I learned from this? Well, I still prefer solder suckers over solder braid. Sorry. Cheerio.